think Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear Hi, uh, and welcome to the, the uh, next episode of Bergeron Briefs. My name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. I do elder law. Many of you may have seen me at the uh, Senior Center at the Council on Aging doing presentations. I started doing Bergeron Briefs because I realized that there are a number of issues in which we need to kind of go into more depth and they don't kind of lend themselves to that format, So, which is why I started the show. And among the set of issues that always comes up when people are doing uh, estate planning is so what happens when you die what happens to the body what happens to the remains how does all of that get figured out and my answer is always go talk to the funeral guy uh, so here's the funeral guy uh, Alan Slattery whom many of you know whom I've known and we've done stuff together for like 30 years something like that yeah so thank you very much for coming I know you were nervous about coming your I wife am. was going to do it but she's sick Right? Correct. So this is your reason for being here. You're not trying to upstage her. No, not. You're stuck here because <laughs> she's sick. So, Alan, um, first of all, just tell me about you. Tell me about kind of when you get in the business and how long you've had the business and, and what that's about. Um, well, I started in 1974 with my mother's cousin, Roland Dessin. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how you were connected to the Dessins. Okay. That's right. Okay. Uh, so I started, like I said, 1974. I did uh, an apprenticeship with him. Yep. Then I went off to school, did my uh, year of schooling, mm -hmm. and um, and did you then, go right back into the business with yeah, him right at back, that point? Right back into the business with him, and then in 1979, yeah. I purchased the business from him. I see. Stayed at the Lincoln Street location for a while, and then in 1986, we moved to the Pleasant Street. And, and gradually over time turned it into what is probably the most beautiful place in Marlboro, the most wonderful. Everyone who goes by there goes, what a gem of a, it's just really wonderful. What well, you've thank, done. You. So thank you. So that, that, that that's, aside. That's my that, wife's that, doing. That, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that aside. Um, so if somebody dies, uh, we're just going to talk about kind of what kind of what happens. And I know when we talked about this a little bit beforehand, I, you just told me a number of things I didn't know. So if somebody dies, first there is, there is a question I was always interested in. What about people who have been organ donors, right? Um, how do people, how does anybody know that you've been an organ donor? How does that get dealt with? Well, usually um, on your license, mm -hmm. it, it will state that you're an organ donor. Mm -hmm. If you happen to die at Marlboro Hospital or any hospital, mm -hmm. they're required to call the donor bank. And where is the donor bank? The donor bank is in Waltham. Mm -hmm. Right By the way, the, well, I'm going to well, find them. somebody from there and have them come out. Okay. And people are going to be interested in how yes. this works. But yeah. so, so they call the donor bank. They call the donor bank. Yep. Um, they have a discussion what the person died from, what the circumstances are, and whatever. Yep. And then whether they are candidates or rejected. But they will call the family and ask permission. If they happen not to be a donor, yep. they, they would ask permission for the family to give them permission to... Uh, be a donor. If they happen to not be a donor. Donor. So, so in other words, if you weren't signed up on your license to be yeah. a donor, yeah. then the bank would c call. Oh, would call the family. The family and ask, would you consider having your loved one donate long bone tissue, um, eye oh. nucleation, that that sort of thing. I never knew that. I never. Mm -hmm. knew, and that might be because at that point they're short on something or they need something. Um, yeah. Always needing. They're always yes. Always needing. Yes. Yeah. And, and so, if, if, so if they need to get that part, mm -hmm. what do they do? Do the remains then go to Waltham? Does they someone to, come out from Waltham? What happened? Uh, in, in the old days, they used yeah. to come out to do the ion nucleations and whatever, but now they... Ion nucleation? They, yes. Removal. Removal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but now they, uh, they have a facility in, in Waltham. I see. I see. So that, and that's kind of how that works. And then yes. from that facility, if they had gone to the facility, would you from the, from the, from the funeral, funeral home, home go? we would go pick them up. I yes. see. And so, and, and as, as far as your role in this process, right? So when someone dies, who calls you? Normally the family would call us. Yeah. Unless the family's a little hesitant, sometimes the hospital will call the nurse at, at the uh, nurse's station or yeah. whatever. Yeah. 
Sometimes if it's a sudden death, the police department will call on behalf of the family. Mm -hmm. But um, usually the family is the... And, and, can, and, and, and you get called when after someone has really determined that somebody is really dead. So can you only take the remains ap after there's been a death certificate? Or after, when, when are you allowed to take the remains? After they have been pronounced. After they've been pronounced. pronounced. So if, say for instance, you're in a nursing home and yeah. you die, the nurse will call the doctor, yeah. Yeah. tell him that the patient or her that the patient has died, yeah. giving them permission to do what they call a nurse pronouncement so that the funeral home can move the remains back to the funeral home. I see. I see. Hospital, usually you get a death certificate. Sometimes uh, the hospital will release without the death certificate. Locally, yep. they, they will do that for yep. us here. And so, and then you, you pick up the remains and you, you, you bring the remains home. And now, yep. who, another question that has come up, and we were talking about this a little bit last night. So who's in charge of the remains? Who's in charge of the remains? Well, it would be the next of kin. So mm -hmm. wife, oldest child, somebody that the family might have yep. designated as the, uh, and, and, as the and person. And the reason why I, I mention that is there are kind of two different pieces to this. I, as I mentioned to her, I remember having a dis have there being a dispute um, in a, with a local family in a neighboring town between the, the wife, because there had never been a divorce from this wife when mm -hmm. this man started living with this other woman and was there for years, right? And these children by this other woman. Right, so it was the and because the, the children who never liked the wife were going to exclude the wife from the from the from the wake, mm -hmm. and I remember calling the funeral director and saying, "Well, actually, I had actually read the statute, and I said, well, no, actually, I think that we have the right to exclude you from the wake.' That's right. right? So it's this question. So it's it's the wife first. The wife is first. The wife is first, and yeah. second, it's the children. Children. But there's no special in the statute. There's no special order of who's if there's an argument among the children. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that says, no. so d have you ever had that happen, that, that one child has said, no, we really want to do this, and one child has said, we want to do that? Uh, no, haven't had that You've yet. Been very Lucky. Yeah, that's good, though. Lucky. That, Lucky. That's very fortunate. But you yeah. want to be dealing with one of the children. Right, and, and, and usually when they come in, we want to know who is going to be the spokesman for the person, the informant, the person who's going to give us this information yeah. and that is going to handle all the details. I see. And it's you, much better dealing with one person versus, well, this one has an idea, that one has an idea, but if they don't jive, right. they've got to work that out before they come or yep. while they're here. Now, one of the other things that you, that you mentioned just before is that also, I, as a living person, have the ability to say ahead of time, before I die, this is what I want to have done with my remains. Mm -hmm. Does that often happen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Is there is yep. there a form that you that you see people use to to, to do that? Mm. No. A form, no. No. no, no I'm just no, curious. No. Not I'm just not, curious. not really. I'm you know. When people I, come and talk to you about you know how they want their their funeral to hand, be handled and everything, yeah. are they do they actually sign something or are they are you just actually, writing things down? Yeah. If, if they're coming in to do like a prearrangement, yeah, yeah. Uh, we would sit down just as if we would at need. Yeah. We have a folder that we fill out yeah. asking for vital information, yeah. uh, family members, uh, and then asking their details. What do you want to have happen? A lot of people say, I want to have cremation. Well, cremation is the mode of disposition. Mm -hmm. So what do you mean by cremation? Oh, you remember you talked so about So then right. we get into... For, for example, what do you mean by creation, <clears throat> cremation? What do you mean by cremation? Oh, well, do you want to have calling hours? Do you want to have some type of a service? Or are you going to be cremated, then have your service? Tell me what you want. So you have to be more specific as to... You know, as to kind of what, what what your plans are, because we can't read your mind. We right. know that cremation is your disposition. Yeah. But what do you want to have happen with the cremated remains after? Do you want to have them buried? Do you want to scatter? Are you going to put them on the mantle? 